When dealing with a falsehood, you're faced with two options. You can accept it or you can reject it. The basis upon which we take one of these actions is a product of our critical thinking capabilities and a desire to know what is true instead of confirming our bias. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. On Brainstorm, we choose the hard truths over the comforting lies. Reason, compassion, skepticism, this is the Brainstorm Podcast. For those listening live or to our patrons, welcome back. For those listening weekly, welcome to the Shift to Reason Radio, the brainstorm production where we take current events and important skeptical topics and try to analyze them critically. Today is June 8th, 2018. I'm Corey and I'm still joined by Angela. Hello. Leo. Hey there. Lisa. Hi. Brandon. Hello. And of course, the always amazing Dave. You didn't say Dr. Lisa. I didn't. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> From your she free can do job that? that you do all the work for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. when they give you a PhD, they give you the fire, right to fire anyone ever. <laughs> so does that mean that Dave has to hit the oh, big switch that's now? That's why I should have gone to some yeah. sort of schooling. <laughs> no. No, it's not worth no. it anymore. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've heard a number of people say that getting the PhD isn't worth it. <laughs> I, I don't regret it. It's just, it's just, <laughs> yeah, terrible. No, it's just <laughs> awful. Your, your chances of economic success are not tied to a university degree anymore. That's like, yeah. yeah. There was like that, that golden period when it's like, get your doctorate and it's gone. Fucking baby boomers. Don't get me started. Fucking baby boomers. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> They fucked well, the whole thing what's up. What's that? Like that critical, that critical mass of all these things coming together made it really easy for people to succeed. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with the PhD in the first place. <laughs> Who would have thought? It was just a different time. Mm-hmm. A different time. <laughs> yeah, when you could go get your doctorate for at minimum wage, yeah. and own a house, and support a family on a single salary. On yeah. a single salary. <laughs> yeah. Part time. Part time, <laughs> mainly weekends. <laughs> How much easier can we make this? <laughs> and I don't work Sundays because everybody's Christian, so it's basically it's on a Saturday salary. That's that's what we <laughs> that's right. get your university uh, degree, but only in the morning because the afternoon you you need to go. You know, part. That's right. You got to golf or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You deserve uh. it. <laughs> you work half a day every week. <laughs> Like yeah. at least twice a month. Oh, shit. Because, <laughs> you know, birthdays and anniversaries. Right, right. And stat holidays. Exactly. As opposed to what millennials, those poor millennials are everything. Going to. So you basically worked five times a year. Yeah. yeah that's for, right. For two hours. <laughs> Shut up, millennial snowflake. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Take your minimum wage jobs. <laughs> shut up, <that's laughs> and shut up. That's right. If you don't like it, starve. <laughs> to death. You can, you can get crackers. <laughs> yeah. But not anymore because we don't like to pay for food stamps or whatever. <laughs> only yeah. only the non- unsalted. You know, the <laughs> yeah. are, that's, that's right. Accurate. Apparently you're not worth your salt. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no more fun. <laughs> we're we're going to go to religious nuttery. You're damn fun. <laughs> Cornerstone, this might be new to some of you. Scripture says that even our righteous deeds are as filthy rags to God. So even the good things that you do, even things like feeding, feeding the hungry and, and clothing the poor and taking in widows and orphans, as nice as those things are, if not done from the place of obedience to in a relationship with God, are completely worthless and disgusting to God. If you're not daily walking in a place of relationship to God, then the news that we have to bring you is that you're on your way to hell right now. Well, that convinced me. This guy's just like reading a chick <laughs> tract, isn't he? He's up on stage at a concert. 
That, that is right before his Christian hardcore metal oh. band plays. Oh, oh, that's that's <laughs> hardcore. And they probably okay. scream, you're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, da, da, that's da, da, right. Da, 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 da life to Jesus. Some of the music that we might play in future uh, breaks it will probably be bands like Destroy the Runner or Demon Hunter, which are like heavy metal bands who are Christian. Hmm. Very, very good music. But I was gonna say, are they any good? If they're good, they're, I'm willing. Yeah, they're super good, actually. But if you like metal, yeah. With, with that kind of stuff, I've always found that I didn't really give a shit because I didn't understand <laughs> any of it anyway. Like, it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> see, I always knew the lyrics, and they actually do a good job of kind of masking it a bit. To so it's like they're talking about demons and like things like uh, sinners and whatnot. And I mean, when you're talking metal, that makes sense. Yeah. That's perfectly good lyrics for metal. Actually, to uh, to deviate just a little bit for a little for just we don't do that here. Yeah, are you at the right <laughs> podcast? <laughs> Apparently, like I've just this is opinion online. It's like Black Sabbath wasn't really a satanic metal band. Mm-mm. The imagery they used was pro essentially religion. At worst, it was neutral, critical of atheism, unbelieving. Yeah, they were they were a, but, a metal band. Yeah, I mean. Metal bands talk about religious iconography all the time. Mm-hmm. But that, it's, but yeah, that's the that's the little digression I wanted. Yep. Like Slayer has the pentagram. I mean, and take kind of took hold of the whole uh, Satan worshiping kind of yeah thing. But <laughs> that's that's you've you've already exhausted my heavy metal knowledge. <laughs> Okay, then. (laughs) (laughs) I I hear there are other bands, but I mean. (laughs) All righty. Let's get into your story, then. (laughs) Well, I got a story from Dead. The article initially was from Dead State. Um, Okay. It's regarding a YouTube pastor named Matt Powell. Matt Powell's got about 350 YouTube subscribers. Fortunately, a little more than us. Yeah, actually, we're getting higher, so I mean, good. So, <laughs> but anyway, he he's trying to build his profile, right? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the way he builds his profile usually is most successful when he says something dumb or kind of evil, right? And uh, along the lines of kind of evil, he's been featured <laughs> a couple times on uh, site like atheist sites, like. Friendly Atheist or the Utah Outcasts, they've done a couple videos on stuff that he's said. Mm-hmm. There's that other one I'm thinking of that does that has a little ba- ba- uh, basement congregation. It's not the same guy. Similar, oh, okay. similar idea, but not the same guy. But anyway, he appeared on a webcast with atheist YouTuber Skylar Fiction, where the two <laughs> got into discussion about the the harm that Christianity promotes, such as anti homosexuality. For those of you playing at home, yeah, it was that bad. <laughs> I'm I'm quoting him off the article here. As like, as far as homosexuality goes, I believe the Bible puts the death penalty on it. I believe it's disgusting. And incidentally, every scientific test has come back and said that homosexuals are 50 times more likely to get AIDS. We got this AIDS thing spreading. It's a fact. That this is the case. Yeah. Citation needed. Well, the, the problem is wherever he's getting statistics probably doesn't account for behavior and, and other factors involved. Yes, they're more likely to get AIDS. Even if they are more likely to get AIDS, there's other problems as such that the population is exposed to. Right. But that's not what I'm here to say. Pretty sure it's shit. just a bit made-up statistic, actually. I don't even... <laughs> it's, it sounds made up. I yeah. mean... Anytime you get an exact, like, 50 times. Yeah. They're, they're exactly three times more likely. Eh. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it sounds fishy. Yeah. <laughs> he was asked, he's like, you, you don't believe that gay people should be stoned to death, i.e. the classic biblical, biblical punishment. Right. He, and this is where he breaks into like, into like a Trump-like cadence. I believe the Bible puts the death penalty on it. Obviously not by me or anybody in a regular society, obviously. Obviously. Believe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe it's the government's job to execute criminals. I believe that the Bible says clearly that homosexual is a criminal crime. It's a crime. It's one of the worst crimes ever. Well... It's a he good thinks thing. he does protest too much. Yeah, maybe that guy wants some cock. <laughs> <laughs> he likes he does. the D. <laughs> Just saying. Give it time. And Give it time. He'll be, I'm he'll just be exposed. Saying. 
endlessly that that those comparisons amuse Some me. It's male like, prost- prostitute will get balls deep in that guy. <laughs> it's, it's just like it's like wow, you complain a lot about this for a straight guy. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah, I uh, evidence I shows it does actually. <laughs> but, but there, there's that little shine light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> because it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like by whatever means they execute people and obviously I believe in humane you know putting to death because you know death penalty is humane right right I guess if you want to go with no suffering that's one thing but putting somebody to death for being yeah, like, gay being a Canadian who we don't have like the death penalty for anything seems like a non-crime is definitely not death worthy yeah <laughs> <laughs> Skylar pointed out that Powell's use of the word humane when talking about executing people was kind of ghoulishly hypocritical. <laughs> I want to kill them, but I want to do it nicely. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the good kind of killing people. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently he it didn't it didn't go out in the article itself, but he went on more about how whether or not he should extend this punishment to other these other awful awful deeds in the Bible, like disobedient children, eating shellfish, yep, uh, wearing blended fla- Stoning, fabrics, possibly lethal <laughs> injection. Yep, you sat on the same couch as a menstruating woman. You're fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. You're up. You're done. How do you adjudicate that? It's really easy. Well. <laughs> Actually. Did you sit on a chair? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did, Your Honor. So we had, but isn't the, you wouldn't have? Would you have to sit on the same chair at the same time? It doesn't fucking matter. It's going to be a patriarchal thing anyway. So yeah. I mean, they can pretty much make up whatever the. Fuck just gonna, they want. Oh, yeah, just going to punish the woman. A jury, That's just a, how a jury. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to help stone the woman because she had the gall to have a period. <laughs> a jury In of all public. Life. Exactly. A jury of old white men dist- determines that you were having your period. They don't actually ask you. <laughs> yep. Yes. We've decided that she was on her period. <laughs> Therefore, she will be so, stoned. That, that so sounds very Trump like. That's very Trump like. So, so we'll kill her and and beat the guy. What? Hold what? on. No. <laughs> but yeah, so once again, this minor, Christian minority here that wants to actually enforce like the worst parts of the Bible. Yeah. Fun times. Good old uh, young new young preacher, I guess. 22 years old. Yeah. I feel like this is like I'm going to say something dumb he wants on the internet. To be Justin Bieber's best friend. That's probably why. That's why. Yeah. So he wants to be Justin Bieber's boyfriend. Let me tell you. Actually, yeah, that's going to be the scandal. There you go. <laughs> he's got to get more than 350 followers yeah, to have a scandal though he's working at it he is he's saying the right things yeah. evangelicals hardcores give it time give it time folks it'll cut it'll happen <laughs> okay i'm gonna do my story now okay <laughs> do okay. it do it hopefully i'm not gonna take too long i did not uh enjoy this <laughs> uh the original article is either. from theatlantic.com, and it says American atheists are as religious as, wow, what was the title again? It's awful, though. <laughs> as religious, like how do they define religious? Yeah, or it's something about religious. Atheists, atheists are, are, are as more, religious or as, Christ, as or Christians. Are, are more religious than Christians. Yes. Our atheists are sometimes more religious than Christians. And, oh, yeah, I read part of this. Uh, by Sigal Samuel. Okay. And it's under the international uh, heading, and it, it actually talks about a study like where they surveyed uh, about 25,000 people in 15 different countries and uh, compared this to results from previous da- uh, surveys. Okay. And they confirmed, of course, the overall fact that uh, – Americans are more religious than anybody, pretty much. <laughs> so, well, and I would I would just like to point out a little thing here. Like, you could also say that smokers sometimes live longer than non-smokers. Like, <laughs> like the, the, just just the way the title is phrased, you could 
you know, pretty much anything, like there's the st- statistical odds that one person might. Yeah. St- so sometimes like the, the, this, this is basically just the outliers. Yeah. <laughs> like, so sometimes. like the guy who credits his living 140 to that cigar right. he had every day since he was yeah. four. Definitely. Yeah. But, but does it make sense? As Angela said, what is the definition of religious? Maybe we'll let you get there, but yeah, yeah. That, there's a number of issues with it. Like, uh, the, the researchers found that the American nuns, those who identify as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular, are more religious than European nuns. Wait, what? Yeah. That, that's where, <laughs> that's where it becomes a little bit problematic. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm because listening. where did you find American atheist nuns? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not nuns. N-O-N-E-S. Nuns. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Research, researchers found that American nuns, those who identify as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular, are more religious than European nuns. <laughs> or European Christians, perhaps. So do they, do they help us understand what they mean by religious? I'm, I'm curious, like, or do they do they talk about that yeah, in the beginning like, of the article? What they what they, they kind of go to just a straight up definition of people who believe in God when they're talking about the nuns who believe in God okay. and want to call them religious. So um, they so are they lumping in like all the none of the above? Like they're taking people who say I don't follow a particular religion, mm-hmm. but I believe in God, and they're saying that those people are religious. So. It's- so it's basically saying that the ones that are kind of deisty but don't really have a preference are religious. So that's pretty much what they're saying. Like the the non-religious people are more deisty in America than they are in Europe. Yes, that's rough. Okay, roughly. Okay, what they're so saying. I was just just that, that, that's what I got from. <laughs> so it's, the, it's still a misleading title, but it makes sense when it's you a, put two groups together. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like of the people who identify as a nun. Like no religious religion in particular, only three percent of those people identified as actually atheists. Mm. So the headline itself is completely misleading. It's it's like it's basically <laughs> like saying that the people who don't like beer in America they tend to prefer IPAs, and in Europe they pr- prefer lagers. <laughs> the ones that don't like the beer. <laughs> that's again. That's kind that's of what, kind they're, of what saying. they're saying. If I had to pick, if I had to pick. Yeah, I was dying of thirst. <laughs> then you can die a little faster after having fucking that beer. IPA. <laughs> but, <laughs> fucking IPA. Fucking IPA. <laughs> it's like pe- people who have never been to a doctor like their doctor more in America than they do in Europe. They. Yeah. Well, and that seems like a, a true statement according to this article. So there was three per- like I said, three percent of the. 22.8% of nuns in America, 3% identified as atheists, and 4% as agnostics, and 15.8% per identified as nothing in particular. Does this include the Jedi? This might include the Jedi. Or and unless Jedi? they attack them. In. Yeah, they're starting, there's a movement kind of growing too. Although it might not, because they might actually say, yeah. I belong to the Jedi religion. <laughs> yup. <laughs> I wasn't. I I I thought about it, but what they didn't say that part of my entry package was lightsabers, so I declined. So I also have an article like that. The original article is from the Atlantic, and it's. Uh, I also shared an article from uh, Patheos dot com, uh, according to Matthew. Uh, written by Matthew Fasciani and he he kind of refu- he disputed like the way this article was written yeah which is fair i thought <laughs> no kidding <laughs> it, it, like his title is no atheists are not more religious than christians <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is kind of obvious if one even thinks about the definition of these words but yeah. I don't know. Not much else to say. Atheists I, aren't more religious than Christians. 
Oh, well, I was just scrolling through. I, I, you may have noticed that I was showing Angela here something. Right. But so I was scrolling through the article, like I, I just like reading a sentence here and there, and then I came across a quote that just said, "Beyonce is a better theologian than many of the pastors and priests in our churches today." Right. And, then, that and I was like, "Okay, so you have my fucking attention now." <laughs> I'm like, what, 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 this is a weird thing to, that I did not, I did not expect I don't that in know the middle of the <laughs> person who said that knows what theologian means. Well, I also, this is a quote inside, so I didn't read back like who they were quoting, but I did this just, I was scrolling through and then that was, like, that, that's where my <laughs> eyes landed, like of my random sentences that I was reading throughout. The <laughs> I was actually thinking of Beyonce earlier when Mendisa said that Jay-Z may be an atheist, because I right. was like, because Beyonce is damn religious. She's always talking about praying backstage and blah, blah, blah. Right. And she thanks God when she wins awards and stuff. So I'm just like, that's an interesting, co- I want to see that dinner conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. About Beyonce. Actually, that, that but, brings up a question, though. Would you consider an atheist religious if he still chose to attend religious services? The definition of an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in God. If somebody who doesn't believe in God a goes person. to religious services, then they're still an atheist. Yeah, but they can yeah. also be religious. How so? In the sense that they are acting, they are yeah. participating in a religion. Yes. Sure. Like a religious person participates in a religion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? In, in, in the end, like, just, ask, just ask the person what they want to be referred to. But if I to, just go for like the food, that, that, then. That, that, you know, it's like that, any other yeah, thing, it's right? just like, what do you consider yourself? Yeah. Are you Perfect. an atheist? Good. <laughs> That's what I'll call you. Yes. Are you a Christian? Okay. But it kind of reminds Done. me of the, of the not religious but spiritual. What are thing. your pronouns? Got it. Good. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're Peterson, then I'm then they. I'm gonna assign them for you. <laughs> right. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. I I I prefer we should refer to him as just entity, a non gendered pronoun pronoun. That person. That person. T H X. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, so, so, so okay. All right. I think I'm. Uh, well, in uh, Matthew Fasciani's article, he's got a couple things here, like uh, the way they ask the questions. Like they ask, uh, uh, "Do you pray daily? Do you believe in God with absolute certainty?" And they found that. Americans obviously are more religious than Western Europeans. Uh, American nuns who are typically atheist agnostics, as agnostics or religiously affiliated also score higher on religiosity measures, which I mean, when you include religiously unaffiliated and you measure religiosity as believing in God or a higher being, then you can still say that. And yeah. I don't know. 23% of European Christians said they believed in God with absolute certainty, while 27% of American nuns believe this. I feel like that's... So that's where they're getting the more atheists are religious than Christians headline. I feel like there's some population issues there. Yes. Yeah, there's a number of issues with that. Uh... I mean, maybe 23% of European Christians said they believe in God. Although that still leaves 77% of European Christians uncertain. Who are not certain of them. About their existence of God. They all, but they also. Cultural Christians, perhaps. Yeah, probably. Well, they, it doesn't completely penetrate their day to day life. Yeah. And you frankly, <laughs> you can. <laughs> You can still work your job at the car factory without worrying about God. Yes, that's so, right. Can and when it comes to a lot of those countries, like if you have like France with their Catholicism or Britain with their Anglican church, like it's kind of like, yeah, the, there. sure. Yeah, I guess, I guess the Queen's, the Queen's Anglican. Yeah, so sure, am I. Sure. <laughs> sure. And so it's a lot of these surveys just way too subjective to, to mm-hmm. really tell us much of anything it doesn't answer much and especially with a loaded question like religion yeah sure my my grandma took me to church sure Sure. (laughs) right and like people who just don't give a fuck like they're like yeah i don't like the it's not a lot of people just don't care yeah a lot of people actively don't care just just like label me whatever you want i don't give a shit (laughs) 
Yeah. And there's also the negative connotation of not being part of a religion yeah. or being an atheist. Like, it, oh, I'm not. Like, I, remember, I always remember that. Um, I always forget it, and I always make you tell me, and you've not seen it. But I, but the girl, the lady who does the monologue, letting go of God, Julia, Julia Sweeney, something, yeah. Julia Sweeney. Yes. Anyway, it's really good. But there's a point where she tells her she comes out as an atheist to her mom, and her mom's like, an atheist, not an atheist. I can understand <laughs> if you don't believe in God, but don't be an atheist. And like, uh, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just got such a name. Right. So if you ask me, are you an atheist? Like, no, I just don't believe in God. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's because you get the Bible burners giving people the wrong impression. Say it. It's funny. Well, and I think that's why sometimes people cling to agnosticism so so much sounds better than yeah atheist. yeah totally. that's right it's, it's, you're not a total like, hopeless case well i don't know yeah so there yeah. And pretty much anything even like spiritual yeah sure yeah sure yeah, yeah sure I have, I have thoughts i i, I reflect <laughs> on things <laughs> i don't know I'm a thinker. Yeah, but I find the pe- <laughs> spiritual people. No, that's not what they mean. They mean like you know. I think that there's an energy flow in I, the world, and I don't really have any but, specific but, religion. But it's yeah, they're it's actually just, worse than people who don't care. They are so <laughs> annoying. But, oh, it, it, uh, but it also my depends. Mom. Like, it, but yeah, so <laughs> like, uh, there's so many specific. different ones though. Like you get yeah. all kinds of yeah, sure, sure. Like I sometimes like just sit and meditate. Like I call that like a spirituality thing. Like yeah, like looking at the river and the lakes and like <laughs> you know th- no there's all kinds yeah, you, you of all, kinds, you all that. kinds of weird but, but i find it's often mm-hmm. like oh yeah no like there's totally this i, I find it's usually an energy related thing yeah, or a good like, vibes really thing or a, universe you know i believe in the I, you know and being good to other people but you know i'm not gonna i can i can sit in my backyard or, breathe the air and feel content too but uh yes yeah <laughs> i don't need to call myself <laughs> I spiritual i can't i don't have a backyard <laughs> My boyfriend Sam Harris talks about um, <laughs> talks about how he uses the word spiritualism when he says like atheists need spiritualism, and he talks about like right. he, because he's a big big into meditating, yeah. and he doesn't mean anything like supernatural. He just means that like this is like a whatever an aspect of our psyche that kind yeah. of needs to be. Uh, massaged or whatever, well, and, just um, like, but he, and we just don't have a better word for it. And so yeah. apparently, he got booed off the stage once. He, like he said, it's the only time he's ever like gone on stage and been like had a standing ovation coming on. And then he gave a talk about how atheists need spirituality with respect to, and then he got booed. <laughs> <coming> <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Which is interesting. Did you just want to hug him after? I always hug my boyfriend Tim Harris. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> let's move on to some woo report. I'm not a scientist, but if I can tell you your science sucks, then your science really sucks. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lisa, did I pick an article that was actual bullshit? <laughs> um, yeah. I think so. No, it's a, it's a criticism of a book. So oh, the right. article itself is not but bullshit, but the book is. Ah, so I think. Which, which okay. fits. I just read the article and I take it at face value. I mean, it's a reasonable article, so I'll just – here we go. Uh, it's from a website called Science-Based Medicine, which explores issues and controversies in science and medicine. So it's a review of a book um, by Lisa Moscone. Uh, she wrote a book called Brain Food, The Surprising Science of Eating for Cognitive Power. Um, before I get into all the information, like all the details about the book and the criticism of the book, I just thought I would read this – actually part of the end of the article, uh, which says that uh, this this woman who wrote the article is actually – where does it say this? Uh Ah, she holds a dual PhD in neuroscience and nuclear medicine. She is the associate director of the Alzheimer's Prevention Clinic at Whale Cornell Medical College, New York Presbyterian Hospital, and the founder of the Nutrition and Brain Fitness Lab in at New York University School of Medicine. So she's got like serious cred. So I read the whole article being like, fuck, who cares about this stupid woman who wrote this stupid book? Because like, who cares? Like it's this bullshit. Of course it's bullshit. <laughs> but apparently, so I, I think it's actually important to start with. She's actually an academic and well-educated and works at real places. And yet she wrote the following book. Okay. So she claims <laughs> oh, the author is and the yet. original author. The, is the, the author of the book has two PhDs and is Wow. It works at very prominent hospitals and universities. So if anyone would know the facts. 
you, about a specific, this yeah, specific area. She it has her. cred. She has cred. Yeah. Well, Except- the thing, well, the thing is, Deepak Chopra is a, is a noted cardiologist, isn't he? And Mehmet Oz is what? Okay, Deepak Chopra is n- not a cardiologist, is he? Oz is a cardiologist. Oz is a cardiologist. Sorry, but oh. Chopra is actually, well, was a practicing doctor. Like, I don't think you're right. I think he was. The maybe dude in the wrong. hangover. Yeah. Somebody look this up while I'm reading this shit, okay? <laughs> now, so Lisa Moscone, who is not related to Deepak Chopra or Dr. Oz, okay, uh, claims that there She's is got the creds. increasing evidence that implementing the lifestyle changes described in the book has the pr- potential to prevent Alzheimer's from developing and also to help slow down or even halt progression of the disease. So basically, she's advocating a diet that she thinks could prevent Alzheimer's and uh, reverse it in this book. Uh, and basically, she offers no evidence for this whatsoever. So... Um, Basically, quote, eating for your brain actually helps you achieve peak performance in every part of your life. Oh. She says the human brain has its own unique diet different from the rest of the body. Um, however, uh, the evidence presented in her book does not support that claim. Uh, in fact, the diet she recommends for brain health is also a diet for bodily health. So... Um, there's a lot of different uh, claims that people make that uh, ways you can reverse uh, Alzheimer's, uh, including things like Alzheimer's being caused by gluten or obesity or lack of sleep or chronic Lyme disease or toxins spewed by leaky gut syndrome. Um, but the science says, according to a Lancet review, that the only known modifiable risk factors for Alzheimer's include low levels of education, midlife hearing loss, physical inactivity, high blood pressure, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, obesity, smoking, depression, social isolation. Notice that poor diet is not on the list. They recommend, uh, so generally like the, the article from the Lancet recommends active treatment of hypertension, more adult childhood education, exercise, maintaining social engagement, reducing smoking and management of hearing loss, depression, diabetes, and obesity. So uh, the Lancet does not, for example, recommend specific dietary interventions or supplements because there's no actual scientific evidence that, that stuff would actually prevent Alzheimer's. Um, did they not just recommend hypertension and diabetes management? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that would be part of... <laughs> that is dietary management. That it, that would be managed dietarily, but that's yeah. not the same diet as she's recommending. Right. And, yes. like, I mean, that would be like a low or no sugar diet, for example, and et cetera, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that's a different, generally different. I mean, obviously, these things would prevent, that having a healthy diet would prevent diabetes, as an example, but yeah. not as the causal thing. Um. So... Yeah. So basically, um, the, 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 the Mayo Clinic says that there's strong evidence that several factors associated with leading a healthy lifestyle may play a role in reducing your risk of Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia. However, more research is needed before any of these factors can be considered a proven strategy to prevent Alzheimer's disease. But Moscone is not waiting for more research. She <laughs> says, quote, the human brain has evolved over millions of years to absorb specific nutrients and to function on a relatively specific diet. And the author of this review says, I don't think that's true. We have evolved to thrive on a variety of diets. But anyways. Um, right, because doesn't everything break down to sugar and run our brain? Essentially. Well, <laughs> well the thing is human beings have lived all over the earth. I mean, right. Obviously, we have not evolved to have a specific One we're diet. Very, we're very, we're very various. We're, it's, as a yeah. species, we're... Anyways. Yeah. yeah. So, Moscone repeats many of the standard memes of alternative medicine. Doctors only treat symptoms. Nutrition is not taught in medical schools. Our soil is depleted. Our food is less nutritious. Pesticides, toxins, etc. Um, she says the brain is the one uh, is w- the one most easily damaged by poor diet, but she does not provide any evidence for this. Um, she also shows two MRI images to contrast the effects of Mediterranean diet and the Western diet. So she shows one person's brain on <laughs> partic- presumably on one diet, one person's brain on another. And this is somehow evidence for something, which of course it is definitely not. All the other factors, eh. yeah, no. <laughs> right. Well, and yeah, two people. Yeah, worst, a, a worst two study person ever. sample uh, size. Yes, terrible, terrible study. <laughs> no, um, not even two people. One person sample one per, size, one, one person each, control. From each group, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Total of two. <laughs> she repeats the oft-refuted advice to drink at least eight glasses of water a day. Um, she cites a study where people were intentionally dehydrated and showed that they uh, – didn't think I had cognitive impairment, um, but nothing to show that 
drinking way more than you actually need would have any effect. Um, she also says that purified water uh, is bad because essential minerals are missing. Um, she makes the ludicrous, ludicrous claim, claim that purified water is entirely incapable of hydrating you. So again, so I'm reading this and I'm just like, okay, who cares what this, this woman says? But it, she's actually don't want she's to. a double doctor and she works in prominent places. Anyways, the, as sources of water, she recommends coconut water and aloe vera juice. Um, and she says okay. that energy drinks are not good for you because they're chock full of manufactured minerals and salts. That's what Anything says. manufactured is bad. Manufactured. That's what everybody yeah. says. So um, <laughs> her general premise with, with respect to nutrition is if your brain uses, uses nutrition X and foods A, B, and C are high nutrition X, then you need to eat a, B, and C to be healthy, um, which is sort of a, a, mm-hmm. a kind of standard fallacy. So here's the advice she gives is to avoid trans fat, eat fresh vegetables and fruit, avoid processed food, limit red meat consumption. It's better to get new nutrients from food than supplements, exercise, get adequate sleep, and avoid stress. So at least what she's advocating isn't like totally bad shit. Like it's not like right. it's going to hurt you. It just doesn't make any sense that this is specifically going to prevent Alzheimer's in your brain. Right. It just, Yeah. Um, I don't know. She points to some observational studies where lower intakes of certain nutrients were correlated with cognitive impairment. So yes, being deficient in nutrients is bad, but not that you need to eat extra of any nutrient, which is what she's advocating for. Strange. Definitely you got to avoid GMOs and anything, of anything that's unmanufactured. <laughs> um, she says she takes royal jelly daily. Daily, I don't know what royal jelly is. It's a bee pie product. Okay, it's like a special kind of honey. Okay, interesting. Um, <laughs> she takes it for its natural antibiotic effects. She says these effects are quote known, but perhaps not scientifically confirmed. So, uh, if something's not scientifically confirmed, it's not really clear how it's known. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, uh, in drinking- folk wisdom. Yes. Did you know that in drinking eight glasses of water will increase your focus and reaction time by as much as 30% according to her? So and there's an 80 question test you can t- see at the end of the book to show if you're, how you're, well, you're following the brain healthy diet. Test has not been validated. So it's hard Buy to my say. Book. Yeah. <laughs> what it means. And she has recipes, organic everything, local raw honey, free range eggs, so just organic grass fed whole milk. So make sure you spend way more money than you need to. On right. Food, right. Basically. Yeah. Basic nutrition yeah. isn't yes. sufficient. Yeah. Filtered water, goji berries. Acai berry powder, ginseng extract with royal jelly and bee pollen, organic spirulina powder, and <laughs> Himalayan pink salt. So all the salt crap again. Definitely. So, the but it's so anyways, I guess it's just really disappointing that somebody who is very uh, has has cred uh, a- academically uh, has written a book that I mean, like I said, it's not going to harm you. I, I could harm your bank account, I guess. If somebody, <laughs> well, but I mean, it could harm somebody who could otherwise not afford it, and they're wasting yep. money on spending on money on that stuff. You don't need of, to spend. Um, so it's if a you're lot not of getting enough with, calories, then it yeah, doesn't matter. With, with with no real evidence that that's any good idea. So, um, yeah. All that's, right, that's the article I read. Deepak don't, Chopra. Don't read the book. Deepak Chopra was a doctor of what? Uh, endocrinology. Okay. Uh, board certified in internal me- medicine, specializing in endocrinology. From where? Uh, so Chopra taught at the medical schools of Tufts University, Boston University, and Harvard University, hmm. and became chief of staff at the New England Memorial Hospital later. So back in similar 70 similar deal similar deal of having cred and being yeah. like really just from 71 to 77 yeah. he was good mm-hmm. the point <laughs> I wanted to get at is just in the 70s the point yeah. I wanted to get at is just because you have a bunch of letters behind your name doesn't mean that everything you say is right mm. unless it's me mm-hmm. you're never wrong Dr. Lisa That's is right. always right That's unless correct. she's praising Sam Harris <laughs> 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 right. You don't believe he's really my oh. boyfriend? Hmm? Have I would believe that. <laughs> 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 I want to believe it. No. <laughs> I think we got that. <laughs> okay. Um well that was interesting. I I uh I suspected it was bullshit because Miracle your brain, cure if you yeah, buy this book. Your brain is kind of runs on kind of basically sugar. I mean, hmm. 
And yeah. so specifying certain foods doesn't seem to make any sense to me because your system you breaks it all down into but nutrients. But you don't need more of them than you need. Right. But it's also, you don't if, need if more it, water than you need. If, if <laughs> yeah. at the end of it's your right. pitch is you're selling something, it's you, generally a little you know, fishy. You just need to look into it a little bit. Like if mm. if the whole article is just to get to now buy my book, that's like, okay, all right. Let's. Well, this was a review of the book, yeah. and it was right. In the, but and it was generally very critical. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, let's do some science. If, Real if science. You, if you base medicine on on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. Um, if you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. Yes, science! <laughs> I don't know why we want to kill people. <laughs> I feel like we need to ca- a caveat kills. to that every time we hear it. It's like, sorry, he's or just British. We just need to have, like, we need to record, like, Leo over and be like, science needs to cure people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you base medicine on science, it cures people. <laughs> All right, medicine. Angela. Even medicine. 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 I apologize to anybody Sounds who's like British who listens to the show. I know. Fuck you and your ass. I, I would just like to say that Leo did not make any offensive jokes. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, there Good you job. go. It's, it's a very different place. Leo since was left. innocent. <laughs> All right. Angela, what do you got? Well, I got a story about an insect that I'm not super jacked about, but <laughs> I powered through because I was it's thinking, for the greater good. I was thinking about who to give this to, and I was like, okay, so who likes spiders and who doesn't like spiders? <laughs> <laughs> are spiders In- insects or are they arachnids? They're, they're not arachnids. Insects. Or I think, well, uh, yeah. the, the PhD should know. No, my PhD is not in bugs. No, 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 you said that, that's, that's that five exactly. minutes ago that you were always right. I'm asking a so question. Now you get to I'm right to the ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, you go. Yeah, you go. Entomologists are arguing, or not, <laughs> that we shouldn't necessarily kill spiders in our home. Unless we want to. Even then, they're Don't saying, guys, leave them do it. the fuck alone. Oh. Because spiders are, are an important part of nature and our indoor ecosystem. And generally, they're secretive, and they don't fuck with you unless you fuck with them. So, yeah, they basically, they're usually secretive, and almost all you meet are neither aggressive nor dangerous. And they may provide services like eating pests, and some even eat other spiders. (laughs) So there was a visual survey conducted of 50 North Carolina homes to inventory just which arthropods live under the roofs of houses indoors and every single house they visited all 50 homes they visited in north carolina had spiders and the most common species they encountered were cobweb spiders and cellar spiders and both build build webs where they just hang out and wait for bugs to come to them um Sometimes cellar spiders leave their webs to hunt other spiders on their turf mimicking prey to catch their cousins for dinner <laughs> Um, so spiders regularly capture nuisance pests and even disease carrying insects. For example, mosquitoes. There's even a species of jumping spider that prefers to eat blood filled, filled mosquitoes in African homes. What? Nice. <laughs> They're doing a public service, Angela. <laughs> so killing a spider doesn't just cost the arachnid its life. It may take an important predator out of your home. Well, there you go. It's natural to fear spiders, but there's also entomologists who have all, have fallen prey to arachnophobia, and they've <laughs> overcome their own fear to work with these spiders. <laughs> so, are you, are you <laughs> apparently we are bites from spiders are extremely rare, rare, and there's widow spiders and recluses are medically what medically important. <laughs> <laughs> There's a note of disbelief there. But the, the brown or cleese spiders can cause some damage. Yeah, if they bite you, like their poison is actually pretty hardcore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can cause paralysis and like infection and stuff. They have a, like, they're the 
like wounding spider, not a lethal one, but it's still. Really well, you can lose disgusting. limbs if you don't get yeah. it treated, right? Yeah. I think there's only two spiders in the world that that actually are pretty lethal, like that actually kill you. Right, black widows, and and, and then there's like a Amazonian spider <laughs> that we, right, that it's the size of a plate. <laughs> actually, I think it's small. I thought I I don't didn't think it was quite the size of a plate, but I. How big is the plate? That's, that's the thing. <laughs> that's a good question. Dinner yeah. plate. Do Ikea? There's so many options. <laughs> no, we don't have one here. I so the moral like, of the story, the and I'm getting like, on? I feel things crawling Angela, on me as I talk about Angela, this. Angela, forget like the punish, don't, like don't the, the poison of spiders. Like, when you have a bunch in your home, aren't they crawling into your mouth and you're sleeping? <laughs> they are not. <laughs> you're eating them. That is, that is a myth. <laughs> no, that Angela, eat spiders. you're eating them every night. That is that is actually a myth that I've actually had to debunk in my home. Every time, my my son was convinced because there was a spider person, a person who like loves spiders, that demonstrated that spiders will just walk around your mouth on video. Oh, so they're crawling on your face, Angela. They're not walking into your mouth. That's right. (laughs) Don't worry. (sighs) They might bite you. They might crawl on your face, but they will not walk okay. in your mouth. <laughs> and then you're going to chew them and they're going to be in your teeth. And you have spider guts in your teeth. <laughs> Floss that out in the morning. Because cause spiders have like a, almost a, a way of sensing danger and your mouth is dangerous. Well, I mean, pro- probably the airflow is the biggest thing for them. It's not exactly subtle. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true too. It, but no, they, the, like, uh, they like the moist environment though, Angela. <laughs> I once I was I, moist. I once was uh, we're yeah. like bugging the piss out of Angela right now. <laughs> I once was told that when you wake up with like a sore sp- like one of those little marks on your leg and it's really spore- sore and you got a bump there yeah. that that's cuz a spider bit you yeah. overnight. Hmm. I've had those periodically in my life. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting that they went to 50 houses and all of them had spiders. Like there was a 100% spider ratio. I'm not the least bit surprised by that though. When I lived in Victoria, there, that was a spider ha- heaven. Like I remember right, a friend yeah. moving out of her ho- her place and uh, she like moved a box and there was like a spider. It was, it was like with leg span. I mean, it was like eight inches across. Like, it, was oh, nice. Nice. it was just sitting there on the wall and we we're all just like, oh. So, so the size of a plate. It was roughly, roughly the size of a plate. A dinner or a supper plate? More like a s- <laughs> Lunch, lunch plate. Eight inches. Jets fired. <laughs> Eight What's inches. the difference? I hate you people. In the- <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm I'm squirming I'm on- here. I'm not going to be able to go to fucking sleep tonight because I'm going to feel spiders crawling all over my skin. Right. They're just on your mouth, Angel. They're just on just your mouth. in my mouth. <laughs> No, they're not just in around. your mouth. Around. <laughs> they're giving your mouth a rim job. <laughs> yes. Rim job. That's what a rim job With their means. hairy, yeah. hairy legs. Oh. Hairy legs. So there's this, this <sighs> trade war. <laughs> <laughs> well, <we're>, let, <laughs> Talk about that shit. Let's go to politics. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that segue. No. <laughs> he, was so yeah. he was still in the rim jobs. I, I, that, that kind of floored me. I might have yeah. to go, just go home already. <laughs> the, the spiders and rim jobs. And <laughs> you, have a, you have an episode title, though. Spiders, spiders and, and rim, rim jobs. <laughs> yes. Spiders give rim You're jobs. You're welcome, Corey. Thank You're you. Welcome. I appreciate that. <laughs> Everybody complains about politicians. Everybody says they suck. Yeah. Well, where do people think these politicians come from? They don't fall out of the sky. They don't pass through a membrane from another reality. They come from American parents and American families, American homes, American schools, American churches, American businesses, and American universities, and they're elected by American citizens. This is the best we can do, folks. This is what we have to offer. It's what our system produces. Garbage in, garbage out. It's not terribly hopeful these days. (laughs) On on that note, (laughs) fuck Doug Ford. Oh, my God. Yeah, fuck Doug Ford. I can fix any problem you you tell me. How? (laughs) We'll figure it out. So I did not prep for this because I was like, this is going to be all over the place because I'm not sure where we're going to land on this on Friday yeah. night. But we could start with the the trade war and move on from there or do it sure. the other way around. Let's, let's I start do not with give the trade a shit. war. 
<laughs> so tariffs on steel and aluminum yeah. from the U.S. Yep. Well, t- the tariffs are from the U.S. To, to yeah. the U.S. The, yeah. Canadian the, the steel tar- the, going to the U.S. Yeah, that's right. The U.S. is charging tariffs on our steel and aluminum. Because someone in the White House is a genius and thinks that tariffs aren't going to cause problems for the people who buy the steel in the States. And what what was – like we're going to charge tariffs on shit that we import from them, right? It's not like a blanket tariff. It's fairly focused. Well, we'll, we'll – yeah, it, we'll see what, what they end up doing exactly because it you can never predict that the guy might wake up in the morning and tweet <laughs> tweet something <laughs> like, well, we actually we're not going to do this. That's true. So, but, but – This and, is what happens when you have this guy as a but, neighbor. But yeah, the, the – the, in general, tariffs are not necessarily great, but also they're not necessarily bad. Right. So, so it's not it's not the tariffs are automatically bad, but the way in which they are being implemented at the moment, you don't want a, a tariff war, right? But you do want some tariffs. I mean, we have Canada has a shitload, but they're rarely mentioned, right? Uh, but because these are deals that people yeah, work, countries work out between each other. Yeah, right? th- these are yeah just trade trade deals. Like okay, so we you we're gonna buy this from you and you buy this from us, and then but you can't buy this other thing because we have to separately negotiate that. Right. So it it's it's not like by default that we should have no tariffs. It's kind of like yeah, countries are allowed to have their own tariffs and stuff like that. But the particularly damaging thing about this is <laughs> the guy's trying to be a dick. Right. So, so, I mean, you don't, you don't try to rub it in people's faces. You know, you, yeah. you, if you, if you plan on having something, good diplomatic relations, something that I, I heard was that, uh, this is kind of, uh, the reason they are worried about this steel and aluminum tariffs, like the reason that they're impl- implementing these, is because Canada is officially being viewed as a security risk in case they enter into some kind of conflict with China, which I think is hilarious. Well, and the, did you <laughs> did you see the the the, the, the article that, that I don't know if you posted that in the show notes? I didn't read all the articles. But, um, That's funny, but, I but, did. But but there was uh, in the somebody's in, a better in the, crew. <laughs> In the, All of them. When <laughs> Trudeau and Trump spoke on the phone, apparently, right. oh. apparently, according to White House sources, that Trump brought up the War of eighteen twelve. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, he's he apparently said something to the effect of, uh, yeah, you guys, "You guys burned down the White yeah, House." Yeah, you guys <laughs> burned down the White House, dude. <laughs> what did Trudeau say? Well, I I don't. I, how, what do you say yeah. to that? <laughs> it's like it was the British. What? What are you? What? <laughs> no, but my I'm francophone. Who said that? My choice of response is: You do know when Canada was founded, right? What? But no, it, he I doesn't. Think, no, yeah. And this is particularly an interesting thing. I mean, the, Trump has lost most of the other things that he tried to do nationally. Like, I mean. Most of his things, like he says, we're going to do this. And then like people, and, like other, the more rational people are like, no, we're not. And then it doesn't happen. And this is one of those things as well. Like I, if you have states that, that have manufacturing businesses that need the steel and aluminum, they're, they're yeah, going to be Michigan. like, well, we, 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 we kind of like, we kind of like the, you know, the whole non-tariff thing. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, most people in the U.S. are not on Trump's side. Sure, like when he says, like, we're going to fuck the Canadians. Well, you know, like, it's, 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 it sounds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you can rally somebody to like, yeah, sure. But once you have the people who are actually doing the, the numbers and, and like the math on on things, who they have to fire and, yeah. and what they can produce and what, what it's going to cost. I mean, they, yeah, most most people don't like the idea. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, I'm just dumbfounded. Like, this whole thing makes me just go, okay, fuck what? it. Let's, let's what? just. <laughs> what the fuck? What Stop. The fuck? Stop it. C- come on. <laughs> you can't be I, this dumb. I, I feel like in the, in, in some, sometime soon, the World Trade Organization is probably going to have, like, something to say about it. Yeah. Because. 
they, they're going to try and to like not let this get out of hand too much. Like, right? I think it. I think it's interesting. Like, I mean, okay, so the U.S. kind of implemented these trade tariffs on uh, steel and aluminum with a with a bunch of countries, and then they were like, okay, well, we'll exempt Canada, Mexico, and Europe for a little while for this X number of months. And then they're like, okay, well, the time's up. So now the tariffs apply to you too. And so now they've actively pissed off trade with everybody. Yeah. Like effectively, like yeah. everybody they trade with is pissed at them right now. And it's, it's, it's very interesting though. I mean, I don't, I don't know if any of you follow the Mexican politics, but there's an election coming up. Uh, okay. First Sunday of July. So it's pretty, pretty soon. And there's a pretty far left candidate running uh, who's who's kind of a little bit weird like Trump, <laughs> oddly enough. He, he does he does say kind of random shit. Oh, geez. Just, just on the other side, like kind of on the leftist side. But the guy, last time I checked, he was like 20 points ahead of anybody else. Oh. Is that right? So, so this is kind of an interesting thing that you get, you're gonna have, he's not nearly as bad as Trump and at least some of his ideas are good. Like, but, right. but he does say kind of outrageous <laughs> things. Like he's gonna, I'm gonna raise the tax rate the same as Canada or something like that, which, or increase the wage in Mexico to the same as Canadian wages and implement the same regulations. And some and of those things just don't just like, work just there. Like, just like, no, like you, you do understand that there's, you can't just do that overnight. Right. But it's kind of an interesting thing. Like in a lot of that, seems to be somewhat of a reaction to to kind of the far right politics like well you know fair enough so <laughs> we'll see how that goes cuz that elections first and then just like another 4 months later they have their midterm elections in the US so yeah. it see this is this goes. is a very interesting thing to happen just before the Mexican election cuz oddly enough the guy in Mexico is also kind of anti trade but he's like on the leftist anti-trade kind of the oh. the, the anti-globalist right yeah. right so it's yeah hmm. it's kind of interesting to a different so, kind of dynamic yeah then. it's it's well and Trump kind of went against anything that conservatives had stood for for a long time like nobody was anti-trade but right. all, all of a sudden <laughs> he went like just all the way around to some weird <laughs> yeah. alternative universe but. So we'll see where the, we land, I guess. Actually, I wanted to share a bit of an article I read. Um, tr apparently, at least the person's opinion is that when you kind of look at Trump's mindset, it all sort of makes a weird sort of sense in that framework where Trump isn't able to think of mutually beneficial deals. Mm, yeah, he I think I saw something about yeah. that. He only he thinks in zero sum. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't believe that it, if if... I'm not ripping you off. You're ripping me off. Yeah. Like there's no middle ground. There's no, we're both getting something. It's always one way or the other. So he, and he is compulsively <laughs> driven to be the rip, the one who rips off others. Right. Because he's insane. Well, yeah, I've, no, I've I don't, heard I don't that before that word, but. on Sam Harris's podcast. I'm just <laughs> right. I don't like to use the word insane, but I don't know what else to describe it as. No, uh, he might have a version of mental illness, whether or not it's narcissistic. Yeah. Possibly disorder. I don't know. I, I have heard a psychologist say that. There's, so there maybe. might be a little bit of affluenza in there too. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, I should find that article and, and share it too, because that was quite good where he broke down in a series of tweets or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, this, this is kind of the way Trump works and he kind of, he sees everything as a, if I didn't win, I lost. Yeah. Type of situation. And, and I think some of the advisors that he's surrounded himself with, like that, the zero sum game, like that was, that was pretty common several decades ago where, where it's kind of in the, yeah. in the seventies where it was thought to be, you know, kind of like, we can't have two winners. Right. And so, He's, he has surrounded him with, like himself with people who have, who are not really caught up with, with kind of the more modern theories on how, on how international relations work. <laughs> so to, to, to put it, to put it like super nicely, but, but <laughs> yeah. 
a lot of the guys are 60 plus year like white dudes who who read a book in the 70s you know that that's <laughs> <Right>. like <laughs> yeah so okay kind of in the same vein but moving on also um we have the G7 summit coming up and Trump asked to have Putin brought in. I don't know if we'd say asked. Well, yeah. I don't know how you, <laughs> how you put whatever he it had, was. He, he had did. like a mini little tantrum. Right. Like publicly? Kind of. Yeah. And I mean. Like on Twitter or what? No, he was in like his, one of his little press scrums. Yeah. And I think that even like Stephen Harper was the one who was one, part of the G7 that booted Russia out and said that. Putin should never be allowed back in <laughs> or Russia should never be allowed back in well, as long as Putin Harper is in charge. was a different kind of conservative. Well, yeah, much different than Trump, right? I mean, Trump makes you wish for Harper. I yeah, mean, it's really, he does. But then no. again, Did, no. On a, ver- on a very little, <laughs> just a little parentheses there, there are some weird connections that are surfacing between Harper and like the, the Trump movement. Is that thing. right? Like he, he was down in the U.S. like promoting books and shit like but you know we, we can do that on a future episode oh, wow like it's it kind of odd little ties like to to similar take to the same people because some of his philosophies would play with that crowd yeah. and especially it came up during like when the the whole embassy move to to israel right or to, to oh, jerusalem of course yeah. of course that, yeah that that sounds about right yeah. But yeah, back back to back to the <laughs> back G7. to the G seven. Yeah. <laughs> so there com- there there's a, a G seven summit coming up in Canada. It's our it's like going now. Okay. Oh, is yeah. it going on right yeah. now? I think yeah. to, today some like, okay. people started arriving. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's it's My in Canada. Was there yesterday already. And uh nobody wants fucking Russia there. <laughs> Except nope. for Trump. Except for Trump, because Trump so, wants his body at the table. Yeah. Is Russia there? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Frankly, not. I'm not convinced America needs to be there. <laughs> G6. Yeah. That, G6. That, sounds, that sounds pretty fucking yeah. good. <laughs> like, honestly, it's starting to look like a number mm-hmm. of the other nations are starting to act of it that way. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of agree with them. It's like, if you can't really play a stable game, yeah. you don't get to play at this table. Because despite his protestations, Donald Trump does not stick to commitments no. that he makes. And you can't trust that. It's almost like he's a liar. It's almost like he's a liar. Hmm. It's almost like that. If only we had a better word, you know, instead of almost. <laughs> it's like something yeah. more assertive and more. Well, yeah. I mean, something more definitive. I'm sure, yeah. just, I'm sure he's told the truth at least a few times. <laughs> well, yeah, if you say enough sure. contradictory things, one of them is going to be true. Eventually, yeah, you circle true. around. <laughs> Did you yeah. do this? Yes. No. Well, you definitely said the truth at some point. Like <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Hey, I, I suppose when he says his name, yeah, um, he knows his name. Well, I thought it was Drump. Or what was no. it? Technically, <laughs> legally speaking, so his name is Trump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> Make Donald yeah. Trump again. Yeah, for sure. Trump. All right, so the G7 summit should be the G6. <laughs> you what else do we got? Americans are booted out until they can collect a real human. <laughs> and and, and so Doug like, Ford shouldn't be the premier of Ontario. And Doug Ford shouldn't be the premier of Ontario. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. I don't know what happened. Ontario? No. Uh, are you talking? Sorry. Yeah, Ontario? Ontario. Okay. Yeah. Well. I don't know what happened. You have You have the same sort of problem you had. When the liberals left federal politics in the early 2000s, where it was essentially they'd been in power, had their arc, people got tired of it, and they couldn't think of... There was no alternative. Yeah, they couldn't, they couldn't <laughs> right. really, they couldn't rightly elect the N- the NDP, so blue it is. I got to think it wouldn't, you didn't need Doug Ford to, to be the person up front to end up with the... So- with, is beer going to be a dollar a can, though? No. Like, he, <laughs> was that 
actually an election promise he made? I don't know. He, he spouts. <laughs> I he, read it in a parody article. <laughs> he spouts um, okay. not quite as much bullshit as Trump, but I mean, he, 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 he doesn't really have a plan. Right. A, a similar style, like where uh, well, just, could, just, just like kind of, po- like kind of these weird positive things, like Ontario's going to grow, like, we're open for business, like just kind of these little one-liners that just screaming them. Because he doesn't people. know policy. Yeah, and like nothing specific. Just, nope. just we're gonna grow our industry. Vague. We're gonna get better agriculture. Get lower taxes. Like just kind of these little yeah snippets yeah. of. But no one had the gall to ask him what what he's gonna pay for those lower taxes. Well, and, and, and he just he just says another thing, like just kind of yeah. kind of that. Yeah, that you just. Just like in a bunch of a bunch of little cue cards. Yeah. Just like in Team America World Police when Alec Baldwin tries to go up against Gary. It's like global warming. She doesn't know. Patriotism. (laughs) We rule. It's not about And unfortunately I gotta watch that movie again. That's something we we kinda suffer with with the way our media landscape has changed. Where you, because you can always find a news outlet that supports your choice, your viewpoint, you worry less about how critical the media is of being, of being of any given, of any given story. Right. I mean, nobody really hounded him regarding his fiscal plan. Nobody followed it. Like they, they were, it was made a point of, but never really followed on. No one, mm. not at every campaign stop. Like it wasn't a big deal. And I mean, this, this country still just has, I don't know, an unreasonable hatred for, for the NDP. Yeah. Like there's, there's a, a, that's a, a big, a big chunk of the population regardless, like, who just cannot stomach the NDP for, whatever reason and that and that's why pretty much every election going into it they already have a disadvantage right because there's a huge portion of the population who would never vote for them <laughs> whereas a lot of, like the other two main parties don't have that going against them right. as, as much the thing and about so. we i was talking about this with my husband this well, over the last while is that the conservatives have very specific things that they believe in and then the left have a much broader idea of what of what they want so when it comes time to election elect a party it's more difficult to unite the left than it is to Mm. unite the right because of the broad range of of ideas that they have i could see that it's it it is easier to say we should go back to that thing yeah or we should continue doing this thing we're doing than it is to say like okay well let's expand our scope of uh what civil rights are or here let's expand our scope of let's be human, daring of uh healthcare or let's yeah let's be daring in any sense right yeah but there is something let's trust somebody to not develop nuclear weapons when we make a deal with them to not develop <laughs> there's something there's definitely something to be said for a government willing to plan more than four years in the future mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I think is I think is important and uh, generally plays well in Canada like yeah. because we don't have term limits we do have a tendency to think a little bit longer term yeah Though it's getting worse back to more like the next election type thinking. So I guess politics, we covered like three different things, but we're going to close this out <laughs> for everything else. You can check out the show notes at the brainstorm podcast.com and our website brainstormblog.net. Thanks to our financial supporters, Stephanie, Zach, the Utah outcasts, Hey, now let's hit that outro music. I was about to do it. I was about to do it for you. I think you're going to tell me. Bassett, Will, Aaron, Daryl, Destin Sucks, 
Bob Glenn, Destin doesn't suck that much. Magnus, several species of small furry animals, animals gathered together in a cave. <laughs> Positively skeptical. <laughs> Rob, Julie, Chris, and Larry. If you want to join them and help the show grow, then you can do that at patreon.com. Slash brainstorm Squirrels podcast. can be skeptics too. That's right. Or you can go buy stuff at tpublic.com slash stores slash brainstorm dash podcast dash gear. You can join us every second week, except we only have one more left before the summer break. Our next show is on June 22nd, and our guest will be Matthew Lee Loftus, a.k.a. AKA the Credible Hulk. Neat. Thanks again to Mandisa wow. for joining us. You can join, find more of her stuff at blackdonbelievers.wordpress.com. So make sure to check that out. Thank you, Dave, for our intro music. Thanks to Aaron Rabbi from Embrace the Void podcast for doing the voiceover. You can find his stuff at voidpod.com. Thanks to Alex Camper Murdoch for doing the voiceover for our ads. And thanks to Jason Camo for the outro music. You can find his stuff at alawstateofmind.com. All music played is either with permission or under the SOCAN license to play. For more information on SOCAN, you can check out the music license info page on our website, brainstormblog.net. Remember to give us a rating, a thumbs up, or a fave on your podcatcher of choice. Join our Facebook group, like our page, follow us on Twitter, share the show, and spread the word. For live listeners, stick around for the after show. Some of us might stick around. Brainstormafterhours.com. Listen to the bonus content before it goes patron only. Thanks for listening, and remember, the truth matters. is an opinion-based podcast. Each person on the podcast is responsible for their own opinions, and those opinions don't necessarily reflect the views of the rest of the panel. Any guests or anyone associated with the people on the podcast, such as spouses, partners, children, other family members, friends, or employers. No one person speaks for the podcast with the possible exception of Corey, and he doesn't speak for anyone else on the show. The Brainstorm podcast does not represent the views of our sponsors. We just wanted to say thanks to everyone who listens to us, shares the show, gives us a rating on iTunes or Stitcher, or supports us through Patreon and Gumroad. We don't have a lot of interactions with our listeners, but what we have had proves that we attract some of the best people around. Smart, kind, and cool. An audience truly worthy of the titles Hardcore and Woo Free. Thanks for helping us make the world a smarter place.